Thank you for purchasing the eMicro One. The eMicro One is a hybrid electric scooter designed specifically for commuting. It is foldable and one of the lightest weight electric scooters on the market. This hybrid scooter allows riders to cover distances not otherwise possible on an unassisted kick scooter. The first thing to keep in mind when unboxing your eMicro is to keep the box. You may need to use it in one to two years to have the scooter serviced. Next, let's verify the contents. Inside of your box should be the following items. Cardboard flyer, USB stick with instructions, magnet for changing the speed mode, your T-handle, Allen keys, charger, and the eMicro scooter itself. Once you have confirmed all of the box contents, carefully read the PDF instructions included on the USB stick. Also, we strongly suggest registering your product at this point in time. You can do so at www.microkickboard.com forward slash warranty. Quick note, your eMicro One serial number can be found here near the back wheel on the underside. The serial number is required for warranty registration. After reading the instructions and registering your scooter, let's get your new ride assembled and fully charged. First, let's unfold the scooter. To unfold the scooter, open the folding block latch pictured here. Next, press in the blue buttons on both sides of the folding block to engage the folding motion. The scooter will click once fully unfolded. Finish by relatching the folding block latch. Ensure that there is sufficient tension in the clamp. Next, let's attach the T-bar using the included Allen keys. Begin by using the Allen keys to remove the top four screws and washers. Next, affix the T-bar with the four screws and washers. Make sure to tighten the screws in equal increments rather than one screw all at once. Before finishing the tightening process, ensure that the T-bar is centered at an appropriate angle. Adjust as needed. Finish by tightly securing all top four screws. Once your T-bar is attached and secured, take an opportunity to familiarize yourself with the kickstand. Note how the kickstand is kicked forward when not in use. You can use the toe of your shoe to kick down the kickstand. You can then easily kick it back forward using the toe of your shoe. Finally, plug in the scooter to begin charging battery. It is important to fully charge the battery before the first use. Charge for at least 70 minutes before the first usage. Here's a brief description of the battery. The battery is a lithium polymer battery that's incorporated inside of your scooter's deck, also known as a standing platform. A full charge can yield up to 10 miles depending on rider weight and input. It normally takes just 60 minutes to fully recharge the battery, and the battery is fully charged when the indicator light on the charger turns green. Upon turning on the scooter, you should also see that all four battery lights are on. Before taking your e-micro out on the first practice run, ensure that the battery is fully charged and that all four battery lights are powered on. Next, turn your e-micro on by tapping the brake three times in succession. You should see all of the battery indicator lights come on. To turn off, simply tap the brake three times again in succession. You should see the lights dim. Here's an important tip. Keep the scooter at the default speed level when first starting out. We will show you how to adjust the speed settings later. We suggest finding an open paved area when first learning to use your e-micro. A paved area free of obstacles, pedestrians, and traffic is preferable. An empty parking lot with even smooth pavement is highly recommended. Here's a brief description of the hybrid motor. Firstly, this is a kick assist model. The engine works in tandem with your kicks. The engine will not engage without rider input. This in mind, a few powerful kicks are more economical and efficient than many smaller kicks. We suggest a 1-2-3 kicking pattern with three large kicks. The engine should engage with each subsequent kick, making you go faster. Once you have mastered the 1-2-3 kicking pattern, you can lower your body weight for a couple of extra bursts without pedaling. Here's a brief description of electric braking versus manual braking. When the engine is engaged and you press on the rear foot brake, you will be able to tell that the brake is electrically assisted. This greatly reduces brake lead time and also improves braking performance. When the engine is off, you will notice that manually braking requires more lead time and rider input. Here is an important tip. Using the electric brake actually recharges the battery. This holds true anytime the engine is on and the battery is not already full. When to brake. Anytime you need to control speed and or slow down. Anytime you need to stop or pause the scooter. Engaging the brake temporarily disengages the motor until you resume kicking. Failure to tap the brake when pausing or stopping the scooter can result in the scooter surging forward unexpectedly. Another time to brake. Anytime you are approaching pedestrians, obstacles, or sharp turns. It is wise to disengage the engine by braking anytime you find yourself in these circumstances. Alright, 
Now let's learn how to change the speed setting on your eMicro. This is important. Only change the speed setting once you have mastered the eMicro on the default speed. To change the speed setting on your eMicro, you're going to need to use the included circular magnet. You can see the magnets here. The default speed setting, known as Eco Mode, uses 250 watts and features a maximum speed of 15 kilometers per hour. The second speed setting, known as Standard Mode, uses 250 watts but features a maximum speed of 25 kilometers per hour. The third speed setting, known as Sport Mode, uses 500 watts and features a maximum speed of 25 kilometers per hour. That's fast. To change speed setting, use Included Magnet. The default Eco Mode will light up one of the indicator lights. The standard mode will display two indicator lights, and the fastest mode, known as sport mode, will display all three indicator lights. After changing the speed setting, make sure to practice with your scooter on the new setting before venturing out. Here are some important safety tips to keep in mind when using your eMicro One. Always wear a helmet, closed toe shoes, and appropriate safety gear when riding the eMicro One. Inspect scooter, battery, and brake before each ride. Obey all local laws and regulations. This includes ensuring that your speed setting complies with local ordinances. Do not do jumps or any type of aggressive riding. Doing so voids the warranty and can possibly cause a dangerous situation. Adhere to the 220 pound weight limit. This includes the weight of your backpack, coat, etc. Never scoot in wet conditions. Doing so is dangerous and can possibly damage your scooter's electronics. Do not scoot over gravel or other slippery surfaces. Do not use the scooter in extreme temperatures. Moderate athleticism is required. The eMicro is not for riders with limited coordination, bad joints, respiratory issues, etc. Do not scoot down steep descents. Always disengage motor by pressing the brake before making sharp turns and or approaching pedestrians or obstacles. Do not tune or modify engine or other scooter components. Here are some important maintenance tips for your eMicro One. When storing the scooter during the winter or other off-seasons, make sure to fully charge the battery at least once every three months. Store your scooter at room temperature in a moisture-free area. Inspect and tighten footboard screws at least once every three months. Every so often, you will need to retighten your folding block clamp. And here's how you do so. To begin, open folding block latch. Next, with latch open, tighten circular dial on opposite side. Reclamp folding block latch. This should be somewhat difficult if you have achieved adequate tension. Every so often, you will also need to tighten the handlebar clamp. Here's how you do so. This is similar to your folding block clamp. Begin by opening latch. Raise handle to desired height. With latch open, tighten using number 5 Allen key. Finish by closing latch. This should be somewhat difficult if you have achieved adequate tension. Contact us if your back wheel has worn down or if your scooter needs any parts or service. Again, please remember to keep your scooter box. You can use it to send the scooter in for service or maintenance.